You are close to retirement and you are leaning towards the decision to transfer your pension from your employer. Now you're wondering how to transfer your defined benefit plan. If you are one of the many Canadians looking to have their defined benefit pensions explained, this video is for you. I will guide you through how to transfer your defined benefit plan in Canada step by step, helping to ensure that you can approach this crucial time with confidence. Let's get into it. In today's video, we're going to go through exactly how to transfer your defined benefit plan in Canada, step by step. However, for this video, we're going to assume that you've already done a lot of the financial planning legwork and are leaning in the direction of transferring your pension. And now that you are fairly certain of the decision to go ahead with the transfer, I'm going to guide you through what the process looks like step by step, helping to ensure that you have all the information you need to proceed confidently. But you might be wondering, who am I and why should you even listen to me? Well, my name is Joe and I'm from IA Private Wealth and IA Private Wealth USA, and there are literally thousands of unlicensed or unregistered financial influencers on YouTube providing some sort of financial guidance in their content. The problem is that the vast majority of these finance influencers aren't legally registered to give advice on financial concepts, but in a lot of cases they do. I am a fully registered cross-border fiduciary portfolio manager and investment advisor registered in seven Canadian provinces with Ciro and in Texas with the SEC in the United States. The content on this channel tends to garner a higher level of trust associated with it because I'm registered to be able to provide advice with the securities commissions in both Canada and the US. And with those registrations come strict regulations and high standards I must abide by. This is to help ensure that I share the most reliable information on financial planning and retirement strategies on each side of the border. That said, please take a moment to read my quick disclaimer here and make sure that you consult with your portfolio manager or investment advisor before before you make any financial decisions about anything that you see on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, I want to take a quick moment to thank you all as I have recently crossed the 1,000 subscriber milestone on my Canadian channel. I am humbled beyond words that over 1,000 people would take the time to tune into my channel every week and I thank each and every one of you for helping me make that happen. For those of you who have just discovered the channel recently, if you happen to like and trust this content, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It supports the videos tremendously tremendously and it helps me reach many more viewers. Thank you so much in advance for your support. Also, if you're from the US or have cross-border needs, you can feel free to check out my affiliate channel at Joe Masick USA for US retirement planning content. And now let's take a look at how to transfer your defined benefit plan in Canada. Step one, request an updated pension calculation. When you're thinking about moving your pension, the first step is to get in touch with the people who handle your pension plan, usually called your plan administrator. Ask them to provide you with a statement that details what amounts you can transfer if you were to transfer that money out of the pension plan. They should then provide you with a statement detailing amounts that you can transfer and it's calculated based on things like your age, gender, how long you've been a part of the plan, and other plan details. When you get your statement or package, the transfer amounts are typically shown in two parts, a taxable portion and a commuted value. The taxable portion may need to be taken as a cash payout subject to income tax, but if you you have available room in your RSP, you can transfer most, if not all of this portion into your RSP to avoid immediate taxation. You also might have what's called a retiring allowance, often referred to as a severance package, which can be transferred into your RSP without immediate tax implications, depending on the eligible portion of the allowance. The eligible part of a retiring allowance depends on your years of service. And I'm not going to get into that for this video, but I have left a link in the description below if you want more detail on that. But in short, your pension administrator will detail or at least should detail pension estimates and give you a complete breakdown of A, what your commuted value is and what will be transferred into a Lira or locked-in retirement account, B, an amount that is transferable directly into your RSP, and C, what you will need to take as cash, which will be taxable. Step two, retire January 1st if you can. Now, why would I be telling you to retire on January 1st? Well, retiring on January 1st allows you to get all of your taxable amounts 
pay to you while minimizing your tax consequences. If you don't have enough RSP contribution room to take all of the taxable portion of your pension transfer, taking the taxable portion as income in a brand new tax year can be very advantageous. By retiring on January 1st, you help ensure that you haven't earned any income from your employer for that tax year yet, which means that the taxable portion of your pension transfer won't add to an already high income from the previous year. In contrast, retiring on December 31st could mean that you've already earned 60 to $80,000 and adding the taxable portion to that income could push you into a much higher tax bracket. This might result in a significant tax burden if you have to add another $20,000 to $40,000 from your taxable portion. That's why I routinely suggest to my clients considering retirement, if they're planning on pulling their pensions and retiring, aim for January 1st if possible. Step three, send all of the documents, including your package to your investment advisor portfolio manager. Promptly sharing your package with your investment advisor portfolio manager helps ensure a swift transition. If you don't already have them open, you might need to open several types of accounts. A locked in retirement account will need to be opened as this is where the commuted value of your transfer will go into. Having your RSP opened is also essential along with having a copy of your latest notice of assessment from CRA. This will help you determine exactly how much RSP room you have as it will be needed to make sure that you don't over contribute. Depending on your financial situation, you might also need to consider opening up a cash account. By proactively addressing these requirements and keeping your advisor informed, you contribute significantly to the efficiency of the overall pension transfer process. Step four, approval and documentation. After the commuted value is calculated and your advisor is notified and all of your accounts are opened, take the time to carefully do a final review and approve the documents provided by your pension plan administrator and prepared by your advisor. This package will include the various forms necessary to help start the transfer process. Review these documents one more time with your advisor and portfolio manager to ensure all the details are correct and to get their professional input. If you have any questions or uncertainties, you should not hesitate to seek clarification from your advisor or from the pension plan administrator. Helping ensure everything is correct at this stage will help avoid issues later on. Step five, complete transfer forms. Completing the requisite transfer forms is a critical step in the process of moving your pension funds. The pension plan administrator and the financial institution handling the locked in retirement account and registered retirement savings plan will furnish these forms for you. Accuracy is key to avoiding any unnecessary delays in the transfer process, but your investment advisor portfolio manager should help in making sure all of the information is filled out and done correctly. Step six, transfer process initiation. Once you and your advisor have filled out all the necessary paperwork, the money will move from your pension plan to the accounts that you've set up. What is really important to note is that the money stays registered during the process and the transfers happen directly from the pension into the locked in retirement account and the RRSP. If you and your advisor have done things properly, the money should not become deregistered, meaning cashed out. It's a direct rollover from a registered plan, your pension, to two new registered plans, the RSP and Lira. During this time, it's a really good idea to keep in the loop and stay connected with both your plan administrator and your investment advisor portfolio manager to make sure everything is on track and going smoothly. Step seven, implement the plan that you've created with your advisor. Now you have likely already discussed exactly how this money will work for you by doing some sort of financial planning, but just in case you haven't, now would be a really good time to engage with your investment advisor or portfolio manager to make sure that you have a plan that suits your needs. It's likely this plan will have some sort of a need for income generation as you are retiring, but together you should build a personalized investment strategy tailored to your financial goals. Step eight, regular review and adjustments. Plan regular check-ins with your investment advisor or portfolio manager to see how well your investments are doing. These reviews are like health checkups for your money. During these sessions, you and your portfolio manager or investment advisor will not only look at how your investments are performing in relation to market conditions, but it would also be a great time to let your advisor know if there are any changes in your financial 
financial situation. Hopefully you'll both work together to adjust your strategy as needed. This helps ensure that your investment plan stays in sync with your goals and adapts to any shifts in your financial landscape. Regular reviews also empower you to stay informed and make informed decisions to keep your financial journey on track. Here's the bottom line. I hope this step-by-step -step guide helps you when it comes to transferring your defined benefit plan in Canada. From the initial decision to leave your employer to the detailed calculations and paperwork needed, each phase is critical for a smooth transition. By working closely with your investment advisor and portfolio manager, you can navigate these complexities with confidence. Reviewing all of your documents carefully, communicating with that pension plan administrator, and maintaining regular check-ins with your advisor should help you stay on track. Did you know that navigating the uncertainties of the markets and your finances is generally smoother with the guidance of a portfolio manager or investment advisor? Studies have consistently shown that individuals who work with investment advisors and portfolio managers tend to accumulate a net worth up to three times higher on average compared to those that go it alone. But that's not all. There's a significant impact on overall well-being with those who seek professional advice exhibiting higher levels of happiness and lower anxiety. Do you want to know an easy way of identifying what kind of work plan you have? Or maybe you want to find out more about my latest upload. Well, I've got everything all queued up and ready for you. Click here for more amazing financial insights. I'll be waiting. We'll see you soon.